Today's lesson is about a group of early Greeks who rule after the Minoans called the Mycenaeans. They're particularly featured in the myth called the Trojan War. So in today's lesson, we're going to learn who Homer is and why this author is so important. And we're also going to learn how mythology and history are somehow related. So if you think back to our lesson on purposes of myth, this myth of the Trojan War is going to be an explain historical events myth. And so we're going to take a look. Who were the Mycenaeans? Well, where did they live? If you look at the map below, you'll see that the Mycenaeans were a civilization on mainland Greece. We can orient them with what we know about the Minoan civilization, which were an island civilization on Crete. And this was located in the middle of the Mediterranean. The Mycenaeans lived just north of the Minoan civilization. And I can tell some things about them based on the geography here. They ruled on a peninsula, which means that they have miles and miles of coastline. So if you have lots and lots of coastline, generally, your civilization is going to be excellent at shipbuilding and sailing. The Mycenaeans lived during a time period called the Late Bronze Age. So if we look at this prehistory timeline above, we'll see that time is separated into, area, into um, areas based on the type of tools and resources they created. So we have the early Stone Age, which ends at 8,000 BC. We have the middle Stone Age, which ends at 4,000 BC. And then the late Stone Age, that ends at 2,500 BC. Because the Mycenaeans live and rule between 1,700 and 1,100 BCE, that puts them in the middle of the Bronze Age, which means they're able to create some more advanced weapons and tools. And so if we look a little bit more deeply at the Mycenaeans, we can see some different characteristics. The Mycenaeans are known as being very warlike. So they're also very good at trade, but their trade wasn't necessarily like Minoan trade, their trade could also have been a bit more forced. So because they were more warlike, they would go to other civilizations, trade and forced trade. So they were very big into import export because of the geography of Greece, because it was rocky, because the soil wasn't rich, they needed to be able to do this trading in order to survive. So they couldn't grow things like the wheat that they needed to make bread, for instance. However, they were really great at growing things like olives for olive oil. And so if you have an abundance of one product, like olive oil, but you need bread, you'll trade with other civilizations who need what you want. Because they were warlike and because they were so good at trading, they were very, very wealthy. And so archaeologists who come later spend a lot of time looking for the wealth of the Mycenaean civilization, which they're able to find in different graves that they excavate. Now, the Mycenaeans mythologically are founded by the Greek hero Perseus, who runs away to avoid the problem he has, which is that he killed his father. Mythologically as well, the Mycenaean civilization was thought to have been created by Cyclops. Well, why would that be? Well, if we take a look at the diagram of a Mycenaean city below and remember the idea that they were very warlike, they would have needed to have protection for that city. And so the city was built with large walls surrounding it. But a feature of Mycenaean architecture is that they didn't use any type of mortar to um, bond these, these rocks that they used to build the walls together. Instead, they used really, really large rocks and piled them one on top of another. Because these rocks seemed so huge, 
that no human would have been able to move them. Mythologically, this wall's creation was explained by giants called Cyclops, picked up each rock and piled them one on top of another in order to explain how these giant boulders were moved. Now, the Mycenaeans traveled all over the Mediterranean. They traded in Syria, they traded in Egypt, they traded with Minoans. Um, and so they sailed all around. As they sailed around and even traveled north over land, they encountered new people and they, they accepted the ideas of these new people. And so archaeologists know that the Mycenaeans were well educated in the areas such as astronomy, navigation, mathematics, and writing because they took the ideas of other people and brought them home and developed them. One of the things that the Mycenaeans are most known for is mythology. And this is a myth that we will be looking at today called the myth of the Trojan War. Now, when we talked about purposes of myth, we talked about seven different purposes of myth. And the very last one that I told you we would be focusing on, particularly in this class, is how history and mythology sometimes get sort of mixed together. They fuse together, and, and our job is to sort out how mythology ties in with history. So the Trojan War is going to be an example of that. So in this myth of the Trojan War, we see Greek royalty like Kings Priam, Menelaus, and Agamemnon. We see gods siding with the two different groups who are fighting, which is the Mycenaeans and the Trojans. And we see just regular men who are fighting this battle. Again, this is another battle, which we talked about earlier, which is going to be 10 years. Now, this war is important because it's one of our, it's our first written myth. And it's recorded in the form of what we call epic poems called the Iliad and the Odyssey. The Iliad and the Odyssey are two parts of the same story. So in the first epic poem, we have the Iliad, which explains the events that lead up to the Trojan War and the 10 years of battle. The Odyssey is what happens after the Trojan War ends. So at the end of the myth, we have a definitive winner, which is the Greeks or the Mycenaeans, and they have to get home. So in their efforts to get home, that again takes 10 years and is chronicled in the Odyssey. And here we have, as a side note, again, a Greek illusion. An Odyssey is a long trip, and this myth is about a 10-year trip home. We know about this, these myths because they were written down in these two epic poems by a Greek who lived around the year 750 named Homer. So who is Homer? When you have a test or quiz, you are definitely going to be asked this question. Who was Homer? Why was he important? Because important he is. Homer writes these two epic poems, and these are the first poems written down. Unfortunately, we don't know a whole lot about Homer. There are some things that we know, and there are some things that historians and archaeologists are able to guess based on what they know about people who lived at the time. So if we look at the map in the upper left, what do we know? We know for sure there was a city named Troy that was on the coast of Asia Minor, which is called Turkey today. We know that there is a group of Greeks who live in the lower part of the Greek peninsula, and they're called the Mycenaeans. So Homer was a bard or storyteller. And these bards, which we've spoken about before, traveled around and told stories. They would often tell these stories in the form of song 
or poem, which made them easier to remember. Another thing that's traditionally said about Homer is that he was a blind poet. Because the job of a bard is to travel and tell stories, historians believe that it's probably not really likely that Homer was blind, but rather was traditionally said to have been blind because he closed his eyes as he shared his stories. Another thing we know about Homer or believe we know about Homer is that he lived in an area called Ionia. So if you look at that orange map again and find Troy and we'll go down about a half of an inch, you can see a little bit of land that kind of sticks out that looks like it's pushing an island away. This area is called Ionia. So Ionians would have lived relatively close to the ruins of the city of Troy. Based on the language in the poems, the Iliad and the Odyssey, historians are able to determine that he probably came from that area and that he lived about 750 BCE because the language and terms used were popular back then. Kind of like today, we have um, different types of words that maybe my generation uses and yours doesn't. So we can see Ionia here on the green map highlighted in yellow. So remember the one thing that we really want to remember about Homer is that he is a poet known for writing the Iliad and the Odyssey which chronicles the Trojan War. But we did talk about how the Trojan War written by Homer and the Iliad and the Odyssey were myths. So did this war really happen? The myths, the Iliad and the Odyssey, have been passed down through generations, both because they were written and also orally, so people told these stories. So the idea that there was a city named Troy has been around for thousands of years. However, in, a year, in the 1800s, an archaeologist named Heinrich Schliemann was really into mythology and he really felt that this story of the Trojan War seemed like it could have actually possibly happened. And so Schliemann traveled to Troy and began excavating. And what he found was a city that was built in layers. And so if you look at the diagram in the upper right corner, you'll see layers and layers of city built one on top of another. And around the year 1100, he found that this city had at one point been destroyed. The artifacts left behind show that many people were killed and that the city had been burned. And so Historians now do believe that there was a great epic battle between the Trojans and the Mycenaeans. Now, the myth that you're going to read next tells you that this destruction of Troy happens because of love, because of a beautiful woman abducted and stolen away from her monarch husband. However, Historians believe that it probably was actually about power. Each of these are coastal cities who were really great, big into trade and controlling the waters. And so it was likely more about power and not love, as Homer describes in his myth. So next up, you're going to answer some questions on the second slide of your daily lesson about the Trojans and the Mycenaeans. Next, you're going to take a look at the myth of the Trojan War. So you'll be reading the Trojan War. The Trojan War is going to be about two groups of people from Troy, and in that corner, we're going to see Hector and Paris leading the charge. And on the Mycenaean or Greek side, we're going to see the hero Achilles, another hero named Odysseus, who is the star of the second epic poem written by Homer, the Odyssey, King Agamemnon, and 
the best friend of Achilles, Patroclus. Please let your teacher know if you have any questions and enjoy the myth.